When Israel was a nation, they agreed to a set of covenant laws at Mount Sinai as part of a special contract with Yah.
From Babylon to Timbuktu, author and historian Rudolf R. Windsor, a true Hebrew, writes, In the year 65 BC, the Roman armies under General Pompey captured Jerusalem. In 70 AD, General Vespasian and his son, Titus, put an end to the Jewish state with great slaughter. During the period of the military governors of Palestine, many outrages and atrocities were committed against the residue of the people. During the period from Pompeii to Julius, it has been estimated that over one million Jews fled into Africa, fleeing from Roman persecution and slavery. The slave markets were full of black Jewish slaves. After the fall of the Carthaginian metropolis in North Africa, Roman power became dominant in the Barbary states. The pagans and the Romans attacked the Jews indiscriminately, both the Jewish soldiers and the uninvolved peaceful population. As a result of this merciless attack, many Jews fled to those parts of Northwest Africa known as Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco, and Mauritania. Many other Jews fled to the areas where Rome did not have any jurisdiction. This was to the region of the South, the Sahara Desert, and the Sudan. Windsor also tells us on page 86 and 87 that more descendants of Judah fled to the west coast of Africa in the 7th century after the Visigoths assumed power and began to suppress Hebrew customs with forced baptisms to Christianity. Windsor cites many credible sources to make his points. Among them is Joseph J. Williams, a 20th century historian who, in his 1930 book Hebrewisms of West Africa, wrote, Whatever may be thought of the more or less mythological traditions connected with the earliest Jews in North Africa, it is now practically an established fact that a Jewish nation, Jewish at least in faith and perhaps too in origin, long held sway south of the Sahara. Now, while Joseph Williams, who was Caucasian and Jesuit, does provide meaningful and factual info that pertains to the descendants of the ancient Hebrew Israelites, he does so with a degree of reluctance. And the book is written through the lens of what I would call a racist and white supremacist viewpoint. Because despite all the evidence of the true descendants of Judah and Israel as a whole being black, Williams and his sources try to brush that aside and conclude that white Jews, who they blindly claim are the originals, must have somehow lost their color by interbreeding with blacks who thereafter assimilated their culture, for which there is absolutely no evidence. That said, Hebrewisms of West Africa is full of valuable information as regards the wanderings of the Hebrews following the flight from Judea, and it also gives great insight into the further scattering of our ancestors, as certain customs practiced in West Africa by our Hebrew ancestors found their way to islands like Jamaica, Haiti, the Virgin Islands, and many other places following the slave trade. So, having fled their homeland as prophesied, there our ancestors were charting new territory in Africa, and trying to carry on their Hebrew traditions in a new land, but not as savages or uncivilized barbarians. In fact, Rudolf Windsor tells us in his book, The black Jews had an advantage over the African tribes. They carried their culture, history, laws, and written records with them. This assured them a constant precedent for the development of a higher social organization. Because of the stability of the black Jewish culture, the Jews were not absorbed into the autoxinous or native population. In fact, the Jews absorbed some of the native tribes. The Jews made use of every opportunity. They were an industrious and skillful people. In the Jewish Ghanaian states were found kings, princes, governors, generals, secretaries, treasurers, revenue agents, judges, architects, engineers, doctors, jewelers, sculptors, masons, carpenters, painters of art, goldsmiths, leather workers, potters, armorers, saddlers, blacksmiths, agriculturists, etc. The survivors of the Roman siege of Jerusalem were able to flee that terror and carry on in a new land, but the relative peace our ancestors were afforded by escaping to Africa was broken by the Arab slave trade which affected not only Hebrews, but men, women, and children from many other peoples that were usually of the lowest classes. The Eastern Arab slave trade, in particular, involved women and young girls, and a strict ratio of two women for each man was maintained. The Arab slave trade, as horrible as it was, eventually gave way to something much worse with the arrival of the Portuguese. <laughs>
That didn't stop other empires and nations from getting in on the action. Over the centuries, Spain, Britain, France, the Dutch, Canada, the United States, and many African countries participated in the transatlantic slave trade. And this fulfills certain prophecies, such as Psalm 83, which I urge you to read with your eyes open. And Joel 3 verse 6, You have sold the people of Judah and Jerusalem to the Greeks, so they could take them far from their homeland. The sad fact is, Psalm 83 is still in full effect, as our collective enemies are still conspiring to keep us in the dark as concern our true identity, and they continue to miseducate us. They really mean to wipe out the memory of the people of Israel from the face of the earth. But Yah is not going to let that happen. And this documentary is merely one step toward that effort. The present situation we are in is solely due to our forefathers failing to keep the covenant law of Yah. And it falls to us in this generation to right that wrong. And Yah said that this would happen in our day. But I will spare some. For some of you will escape the sword when you are scattered among the lands and nations. Then in the nations where you have been carried captive, those who escape will remember me. How I have been grieved by their adulterous hearts, which have turned away from me, and by their eyes, which have lusted after their idols. They will loathe themselves for the evil they have done and for all their detestable practices, and they will know that I am Yah. I did not threaten in vain to bring this calamity on them. You see, we, the people of Israel, are not born deserving of that name. We are born as Jacobs, or supplanters and schemers. But to truly earn the right to be called Israel, we, like our father Jacob, will have to be faithful and wrestle with Yah until we are overcomers. Those of us who do this will be the ones who will truly be called Israel and form the remnant of the kingdom. Having said that, please don't let this be the end of your search for truth on this subject. Continue to dig for it and pray that Yah gives you discernment since a great deal of deception is out there regarding this topic and spread the word to your friends and family, and he or she that has ears to hear and eyes to see among them will get it. I hope that this brief history has enlightened you and brought a degree of understanding as concerns our past, which goes well beyond Africa. The so-called Negroes, Blacks, and African Americans are actually the descendants of the people of Judah, and that is something they don't want us to know.